The Four Feathers 1929 film. The Four Feathers is a 1929 American war film directed by Marion C. Cooper and starring William Powell, Richard Arlen, Clive Brook, and Faye Ray. The film is the third of numerous film versions of the 1902 novel, The Four Feathers, written by A. E. W. Mason. Plot As children, Harry promises to marry Eth, but she consents only if he will dress as a soldier. When Harry is still a child, his father tells him stories about the Crimean War, including one where a runaway soldier is spurred into suicide by Harry's father, who sent him a white feather to show his disapproval of cowardice. As a young man, Harry joins the army and is engaged to Eth. His best friends are Durrance, Trench, and Castleton. Harry receives a telegram that their regiment is being deployed in Sudan, and he resigns from the army. His friends and Eth find out why Harry resigned and give him four white feathers. Harry's father also disapproves and gives him a pistol and tells him to shoot himself. Harry decides to act courageously in front of his friends in order to get them to take back their feathers and travels to Sudan. In Sudan, Trench has been captured by the enemy. Harry saves him and Trench takes back the white feather. Harry stops a mutiny and saves Castelton from an ambush. Eth and Harry get back together. Cast Richard Arlen as Lieutenant Harry Feversham. Fay Ray as Eth Eustace. Clive Brook as Lieutenant Jack Durrance. William Powell as Captain William Trench. Theodore von Eltz as Lieutenant Castleton. Noah Beery Esser. A slave trader, trader, slave trader, 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 trader. Zach Williams as Idris, Noble Johnson as Ahmed, Philip De Lacy as Harry, age ten, 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 age ten. E. J. Ratcliffe as Colonel Eustace, George Fawcett as Colonel Feversham. Production The picture has the distinction of being one of the last major Hollywood pictures of the silent era. It was also released by Paramount Pictures in a version with a Moviatone soundtrack with music and sound effects only. The studio considered making it a full talkie and acquired the dialogue rights to the story for an additional $2,500 on top of the silent rights for which they had paid $12,500. The book the film was based on, The Four Feathers 1902, was one of the only books in Cooper's possession while he served as a volunteer for the Polish resistance in Kosciuszko's squadron. Cooper found the book inspirational. Cameron Rastegger, associate professor of Arabic and comparative literature at Tufts University, noted several parallels between Cooper's life and that of the protagonist of Four Feathers. Both were born into military families expelled from naval colleges, voluntarily enlisted, and escaped from military prisons. Cooper embraced the ideology both of the masculine ideal and the colonial idea that white men had a right to rule over others. A 4849 Cooper, Shudsak, and Shudsak's wife, Ruth Rose, traveled to Tanzania and Sudan to shoot parts of the film in 1927. Cooper wrote Two Fighting Tribes of Sudan for a 1929 National Geographic article using material from the expedition. A 4849 film from the expedition was interweaved with parts shot on sets in Hollywood. Actors were not transported to Sudan, which helped reduce filming costs. Four Feathers was one of the first films to use this technique. Cooper oversaw trapping hippopotamuses for a scene where they stampede into a river and three people died in the process. After a few native villagers went home during the trapping of hippos, Cooper beat every native he could find. 166, 53, 55 Cooper observed the baboons for three months before capturing them, and his notes filled 800 pages. 167 Cooper also put baboons on a suspension bridge over a river and cut it down in order to film them trying to swim to safety. 5355 Back in California, the producers built a large camp between Palm Springs and Indio to shoot the actors themselves in fight scenes. 
Cooper and Shudsack hired African Americans from Los Angeles to stand in for Haddon Sudanese men. 56 Adolf Zucker, Paramount studio head, insisted on the film being silent, though directors wanted it to be a talkie. The film was billed as the last of the big silent films even though it had a soundtrack and sound effects. According to Thomas Schatz, producer Selznick saved the film from disaster by conducting retakes and re-editing the film after its initial preview. Cooper requested that Selznick stay off of the set, and Selznick complied. However, Cooper was supposed to approve of Selznick's edits, but was away during post-production of The Four Feathers. He disliked the new takes. 174-175 Criticism Peter Limbrick, assistant professor in film and digital media at the University of California, Santa Cruz, noted that Four Feathers is a masculine adventure that values power above other virtues and excludes women. 29 Limbrick also noted that the way the film used African-American extras in California to stand in for Haddon-Dones in Sudan reflected the way white settlers like Cooper viewed their position in society in the United States. 56-57 Cooper's comments to others while abroad showed that he viewed all black people as racially inferior, a settler superiority that leads to the narrative found in The Four Feathers, which is responding less to the facts of the land than to pre-existing colonial visions of it, and disavowing indigenous habitation and meaning. 58 Jeff Cameron Rastegger notes that Cooper's Feversham shows resentment and anger when reincorporated into the military and reunited with F. Rather than transforming from a coward to a hero, Feversham seems to be a hero who has only now found recognition for what he always had been. 50 to 53, according to Rastegger, Cooper's Feversham improved on colonial forms of masculinity by having him display a brooding sense of resentment. 53, 54, fear of a corruption. 66, 66, 66. Accolades. The film is recognized by American Film Institute in these lists. 2006 AFI 100 Years. 100. Cheers nominated.